as you can clearly hear, hopefully, in that opening video there, this AC compressor is noisy. It was underwater, and the clutches and everything just got really noisy. Um, I already discharged the system, getting ready to put in a new one. There wasn't really anything hardly in there. It probably leaked anyway, so not a big deal. Um, picked up a new compressor from Rock Auto, so we're going to switch that in. Hopefully it's the right one. I haven't even verified it. So it's the new compressor. Like I said, from Rock Auto. It's like $175, I think. Super cheap. Even junkyards want around 100 bucks for a used one. So $175 seemed definitely worth it to me. Just looks like the right one to me. I believe it is. We're going to go ahead and yank out this old one. Hopefully it's not too, too bad. I think there's enough room once the lines are out of the way to, to lift the compressor out of there, but we'll see. So let's get started. It should sound a whole lot better once I replace that. I'm going to start by taking the lines off. I think they're a lot easier to take off now than it will be later. Got one line out of the way, super easy. Got both lines out of the way. Let's see about getting this uh, connector off. Let's get the wiring out of the way. Just gonna pop off the belt. Now we've got just three bolts, I believe, holding it on. And they're mostly pretty easy to get to. This back one, oddly, wasn't even tight, which is interesting. I mean, it was snug, but it wasn't, it didn't take any force to break it loose. This one in the back has a, a, uh, mount for these transmission lines as well just gotta remember that that goes back in there i think those are the transmission lines i could be wrong might be ac this top one i don't know how well you can see this on the camera but there's a bolt here that you have to take the nut off and then you have to actually remove the stud um, otherwise you can't get the ac compressor past it it's really weird that they made it that way. I'm not really sure what the reason was, but I've worked on enough of these to know that stud has to come out. And so I'm gonna take that one off now instead of doing the bottom one first. That way the bottom one will hold everything tight while I take this nut off and then the stud will come out.
Uh, the, the stud comes out with a, it's an E7. This is a, uh, it's a female, it's a male Torx. And everyone I've taken out to this point has come out relatively easy. Uh, so we'll see if that's still the case now that I've opened my big mouth and jinxed it. Okay, well that was a lot easier than I even anticipated. There we go, there's that stud. Now I believe we have just the one bolt left at the bottom. That seemed like it broke loose, broke loose really easy as well. I don't know if you can see on the camera or not, but you'll notice that I'm almost always, when I break a nut loose, I'm almost always doubling my wrench up like this for leverage. Um, it's a trick that most people are aware of it, but some people might not be. I've lost enough knuckles over time that I, I no longer even try. Like if it's gonna be hard to come out at all, I'll try to use leverage first because it's just not worth it. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. I used to be completely dead against using gloves too. You know, the old saying, well, I can't feel anything with my gloves on. But now that I do this sort of thing so little, and I spend a lot of my time sitting behind a desk doing computer work. I've gotten so that I don't really like getting my hands all covered in grime anymore. If I can help it, I still find myself on a lot of jobs where the gloves go away and I just get elbow deep in grease again. But for a small job like this, if I can prevent getting my hands all beat up, I will. Here we go. So here's the old unit. Can you hear just how awful that sounds? So that's what I've been listening to every time the engine runs. And there's no way that that other compressor is gonna be the right one because this whole job went far too well so far for it to be this easy. So let's find out if that one fits. So one really nice thing about this AC compressor is it says right on it that it comes pre-filled with the correct oil. So you don't have to put oil in this. You just swap it out, charge the system, and go. So that's what we're going to try to do. See if this bolts right in there. It's got these little... There's little block off plates where the lines will go so that the oil doesn't leak out. Let's see if we can get this in. So got the bottom one started, we'll put the back one on just to get the alignment correct. All right, so I got the bottom bolt in and the back bolt in. Now it's time to put the stud back in. Put that nut back on that goes on the stud. So I take off these, these plates, the block off plates that hold the oil from coming out. See, that's what they look like, a little plug. 
it actually didn't really want to come off. It had a little vacuum on it or something. It was so well sealed. The compressor came with these new O-rings. But the problem I'm having is that what is on the actual line doesn't look anything like that O-ring. So I don't know if I should use them or if I should use what's already on the line. That's what's on the line. It's like a metal disc with a rubber inside. Not sure how I feel about swapping that out for the O-ring. So let's look at the uh, handy dandy instructions it comes with. And it actually tells me to drain the oil from the new compressor and dispose of. And then to install half of an oil charge into the compressor and the remainder throughout the system. I'm going to just go with that uh, it's good to go. <laughs> Could be wrong. We'll find out. Really not sure if this o-ring is the right way to go, but I think we're going to give it a shot Feels like it will seal. It's got one line on. I'm just going to take the seal off of this one, put the other O-ring on this one. It's one of those instances where I, I need to be able to feel so I can't wear the gloves so I don't drop the nut. All right, lines are back on. Now we gotta put that electrical connector back. All it's left to do is put the belt back on and then charge the system. That probably makes a little bit of noise, but I don't think it's that bad. It spins nice and free. All right, well, I think we've got it. Um, just gonna go start it up for the first time, see how it sounds. It's not charged up or anything yet, but this will be the first time turning it over, see what it sounds like. Uh, that wasn't bad. The, I just looked at my camera when I was moving it and I started recording it took 45 minutes from the time I started recording. Um, you didn't see every bit of it because I cut some stuff out that's you know, born. You don't want to watch me for 45 minutes. It's probably born as it is, but at least you could see how easy this job is to do. Uh, assuming it was done correctly. I don't know about the whole taking some oil out, putting oil back in, all that, but uh, let's start it up and see how it sounds.
so much better. hear some sounds, but I mean, it's much, much better. The compressor isn't making noise now. I hear some air intake because, like, I don't have my intake manifold. The air intake tube isn't on here right now, but much better. Well, I think that's going to do it. Uh, like I said, I still got to charge it up. I don't actually have the uh, the r135 or whatever the heck it is i don't have that with me right now but i've charged plenty of systems it's not a big deal really easy to do um it's nice and quiet i think i will change that upper pulley though because i can hear that and it's like the only thing that i hear now um, everything seems pretty good so yeah excited to have that job done i can't believe it only took 45 minutes in like 100 percent humidity you might have noticed i was sweating to death in the middle of the little project there um that's gonna do it thanks for watching